Welcome to the service of the Way of the Cross. Tonight's Way of the Cross uh, comes from the writing of Christy Keneally, uh, an Irish author um, in 1970s. He writes as a preface. He's very much alone now. All his fair weather friends have gone and left him. Eaten bread is soon forgotten. His life is dripping into the dust. And the worst part of it all is that he doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to matter. Life goes on all around. Shops are open, people salute one another, children play in the road. So walk on the edge of the crowd. Step out of the doorway of your own fear, pain or anxiety, or sense of failure. And even if you cannot go the whole road with him, I'd ask that you just stand at some point along the road so that he can see you as he passes, so that he'll know that it isn't all for nothing, that at least it matters to you. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, our life and our resurrection. And so we come to the first station. The first station is where Jesus is condemned to death. So it was, brethren, that when I came to you and preached Christ's message to you, I did so without any high pretensions to eloquence or to philosophy. I had no other thought of bringing you any other knowledge than that of Jesus Christ and of him as crucified. Let us remember now all our brothers and sisters all over the world who may be at the mercy of a harsh institution or a harsh system, who may be at the mercy of paper kings beribboned with red tape. Let us remember those who are clinging desperately to their dignity as human beings in the grip of an illness over which they have no control, or in the grip of a fear or an anxiety that must be faced. Let us stand, you and I, in the courtyard of the Roman Pilate with the silent Jesus, and let us watch the official wash his hands of this troublesome, quiet man. And looking through the small lens of our own private pain and the larger lens of Christ's pain, let us look with compassion on the suffering of all mankind, that those of us who have some hope lead the steps now of our friends who stumble in despair. Let those of us who can mumble a prayer, be it ever so small. Speak now for those who are struck dumb in loneliness or grief, and let us follow in the steps of the master. The second station is where Jesus accepts his cross. If any man has a mind to come my way, let him renounce himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He who tries to save his life will lose it. It is the person who loses their life for my sake that will save it. A tree is planted beside living water, a tree that perhaps gave shelter and rest to many birds of the air, to many sparrows is now cut and ravaged in its prime, and it too is a crucified living thing bled of its sap. And soon the red man's sap, the blood of Jesus, will pour into that tree and will give it an immortality in the memory of humankind for all time. All creation is summed up in this one man. All of the pain and the beauty of creation is in this man Jesus and it groans in him now. And just as man and nature were combined in creation, so now they are combined in crucifixion. Yet here is no shame. Here is nothing to gild or paint over, nothing to hide or to camouflage. Let me never be blinded by a world that would see my cross as a curse, by a world that would think me leprous and unclean, 
because I have scars on my body or on my soul. Let us walk together, Jesus of Nazareth, under our crosses, so that from your patience I may draw a strength to share with all my brothers and sisters. The third station is where Jesus falls for the first time. Jesus said to them, Have you strength to drink of the cup I am to drink of, and to be baptised with the baptism I am to be baptised with? They said to him, We have. Does a mother, mother hesitate for a moment to kiss the dirty face of her child? And will the one who made us with so much love not know me now beneath my sores, my anxieties and my failure? And will he reject me as a stranger? Never. Because he is never so great as when he stoops to help his lowest child. And I call out to you now, my father. I ask you to raise me from where I've fallen in my pain. I taste the dust of despair in my mouth, and I'm tempted to lie down in my self-pity. But there are roads to be walked, leading I know not where. There are people to be touched, I know not whom. But you know, Jesus, and you are asking me to. Walk a little further with me, friend, for I am very much alone in my pain. The fourth station is where Jesus meets his afflicted mother. Rejoice, O highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus. His kingdom, there will be no end. God, is this the child you promised me? Is this the man-child Simeon wept with joy to see? Is this the eager young man so full of questions in the temple that he amazed the learned men? And am I to look at him now with soldiers spit on his face and a timber beam cutting into his shoulder? And they did meet. He looked at her and his mother returned the look. And you'll find there are no words mentioned in any of the four Gospels. There is no record of conversation between a mother and her son. And how could there be? Because there are feelings which go beyond words, as there are sufferings beyond tears and agonies beyond screams. But the eyes of son and mother were eloquent, and every letter of their looks spelt out love. And then he walked on. Let it not be forgotten then by those who sit at a bedside, that there is a wealth of love in me as silent presence, in just being with. Mary, give us your courage to look with unfeigned, unshamed love on our brothers and sisters who are wounded, who are struggling. Jesus, give us your courage to respond to the love of those who penetrate our pain with good intent. Jesus and Mary, strengthen all of us to walk together. The fifth station, Simon, the cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. And so they led him away to be crucified. As for his cross, they forced a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry it, a man by the name of Simon of Cyrene. He was just a man up from the country, minding his own business, bullied into helping a criminal. Of course, he would much rather not have got involved, and he does it with bad grace. Jesus. Sickness and pain are realities in our lives, and you didn't come to take them away, but you took them on yourself and gave them a meaning. You shared our cross. You drank the cup of pain to the very last bitter dregs when you didn't have to. And now you are saying to me, lean your cross on me. Together we can carry this pain. Together we can take away the loneliness. We can keep our dignity and our worth together. Jesus, help us who have the care of the sick to have patience and love. 
help us to take time to sit in their Gethsemane, to share their worries and their anxieties, to be near them on their Calvary. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We carry about continually in our bodies the dying state of Jesus, so that the living power of Jesus may be manifest in us too. How easy it is, of course, to feel sorry from a distance. How easy it is to say, oh, what a shame, and then quietly move on. After all, this is a convicted criminal. He's soaked in sweat and blood and he's carrying the crossbeam of his shame behind him. He is surely one who is rejected by men and cursed by God. And yet, to Veronica, this woman, he was some poor woman's child. She'd probably have done it for anyone. And I ask you now to look into the crowd from your pain and to look at me. I am a leper. I look into my own soul and see only disease and decay. I see soured love and stunted promise. And I want to ring a bell and shout out, I am unclean. And yet you walked up to one just like me and you touched him. You were not disgusted by his sores or his sickness. Touch me now, Christ. Touch my heart. Wipe away from it my self-loathing, my anxiety. Wipe the sweat of anxiety and the blood of selfishness out of my eyes. And let me see those who need me. And then, Lord, let us walk on together. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. Only look well to yourselves. Do not let your hearts grow dull. Keep watch over them at all times, so that you may be found worthy to come safe through all that lies before you and to stand erect to meet the presence of the Son of Man. I am afraid of only one thing, Lord, and that is that I shall get used to suffering, to sadness and to death. For if I do get used to them, if I do get accustomed to them, then I shall have died. When my sorrows increase in number, let them not numb my soul. Lord, make me even more tender. Though I'm cut to the heart a hundred times a day by the pain of others, and I bleed, let me never, Lord, grow anemic in my love for them. Let me never ever say that I have loved enough or that I have suffered enough. Let me never wish to stop on the road and lie down in the shade of my cross, but rather give me the courage to rise with it and to press onwards, however slowly and unwillingly. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples went into the wilderness to a quiet place so they could be alone and pray. But a great crowd followed him, and when he saw them, he was moved with compassion, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now, here's a wonderful occurrence. It was as if a man dying in great pain were to drag himself painfully to open a window to release a captive bird. Every lash line on his back and every thorn scrawled into his head spelt out L-O-V-E. And the drops of blood scribbled love in the dust behind him as he walked. Yet his agony does not entomb him. He does not turn his eyes inward to the contemplation of his own misery, but outward to be moved by the compassion of some bystanders and so to speak. If I were crippled, Lord, let me rejoice in those who run. If I am be blinded, Lord, let my sightless eyes mirror the beauty that's all about me. Let my pain make me sensitive, Lord, 
to the pain in others so that we may help each other move forward in life. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. Peter was deeply moved when he asked for a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You can tell that I love you. Who could have blamed you, Lord, if you had just stayed down, had died there in the street? Nobody, surely. You had already endured so much, but it was not your Calvary. This had to be seen through to the end. You will not present a cup that's half full to the Lord, your father, and so you drag yourself up again. And what do you expect of me, Lord? How much can I take? I'm only human. When will there be enough? Why, Father, I think you expect me to raise myself up by my boot laces and to stumble on, and I think you love me for my effort, not for my achievement. It gets harder, Lord. It gets harder to kick to the surface every time that I go under. But I must do it because up there is where the light is. Calvary and resurrection are so close. Help me now, Lord, to climb the hill of my own pain to climb the hill so that I may see your glory. The tenth station is where Jesus is stripped of his garments. Believe me when I tell you this, a grain of wheat must fall into the ground and die, or else it remains nothing more than a single grain. But if it dies, then it real, yields a rich harvest. What dignity can a man who has been betrayed, mocked with a kiss, deserted and denied by those he held dearest, who has been torn by tongues and lashes and jibes and thorns, who is now unrecognisable because of spit, sweat and blood, and yet there is more. The covering which had become part of his skin was roughly torn from him and he was left exposed, raw and bleeding. Lord, when pain seems to strip away my protections, when old age saps my independence, when all the support I have in life of family, health and physician are taken away and I stand there raw and bleeding because they have been so much a part of me and I am naked and helpless as when I came into the world. Let me remember this moment of your passion and let me be consoled. Let me be consoled that I have put on Christ, that Christ's love is a vestment beyond the power of human embroidery. It is a vestment too finely woven for the human eye to see, but it is sufficient for me, Lord. It was his love that brought me naked to the world. And should I be stripped of all worldly things, then let me go back to you as I came. Father, I will be done. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to his cross. With Christ, I hang upon the cross, and yet I am alive. Or rather, not I, it is Christ who lives in me. The hand that wiped blindness from the eyes the hand that opened the seal of deafness, that touched a heart and cured a leper, that caressed children. The carpenter's hand is joined to the wood again. He hangs there between human and God, a blood-stained intermediary, and all his wounds are mouths giving eloquent testimony in blood to God's love. Lord, my fear and my pain pin me to the earth like a fly, pinned to the wall by cruel boys. And my reaction is to buzz madly, to flap my wings as if to fly again, to attempt what I was rather than to accept what I am. And so, Father, if it is my lot to be caged in my pain, then let me make sweet music for those around about me. If I must be wounded and held mute, let my pain speak loudly of your love. Let me open my soul to the nails, Lord. 
For as long as they fasten me to the cross, I am not afraid. Jesus, we are together. The 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. He dispossessed himself and took the nature of a slave, fashioned in the likeness of men, and presented himself to us in human form. And then he lowered his dignity. He accepted an obedience which brought him to death, death on a cross. After three hours of great agony, it is consummated. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And so I am free. I am made a new creation. My ransom is paid. I stumble back into the light. I will not speak my crucified saviour of that which is beyond words. Just as a son cannot thank their father or mother, or a daughter cannot evaluate her parents' love. So I cannot dilute this act of love with words. Let my love span the silence, Lord. Let my love be eloquent in your praise. The 13th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? Think what anguish of mind your father and I have endured searching for you. But he answered them, what reason had you to search for me? Could you not tell that I had to be about my father's business? Is there any sorrow like unto my sorrow? There's no surprise that the face of Michelangelo's Madonna should have been mutilated because even in cold, bloodless marble, the expression of grief was a constant silent reproach to all humanity. And yet there is compassion in that face. There is the vast compassion of a heart that's stretched by personal pain. When I am in the darkness of my Gethsemane, when I am earthbound in my fear or anxiety, Christ, may you be there. When my lifeless body slides like a springless puppet from the cross of life, may you be there to hold me as you are held by your mother. And I am assured that I will have your peace. The 14th and final station, Jesus is laid in the sepulchre. The suffering of Christ, it is true, overflows into our lives. But there is overflowing comfort too, which Christ brings to us. He is put into a borrowed tomb, a hole in the earth. It's a hasty, pushing out of sight kind of death. Was he worth no more than that? Fading photographs, fading memories, dust to dust. And yet this is a rich and blessed earth that bears the seed of my salvation. This is the welcome darkness that bears the glimmer of resurrection. Light assured, but not yet. And even though we have come now to the last station, we haven't come to the end, but to a new beginning, because the light we are looking forward to is one that can never be quenched. It will be reflected for all time in the eyes of children, it will radiate from those who love and care. And even in the dark days, it will glisten in tears. Thanks be to God then who can make light of my darkness. Thanks be to God who can make music of my silence. Thanks be to God who can make the stone rejected by the builders into the cornerstone of God's love. Who can make even me the instrument of his peace and love. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Saviour of the world, by your cross and precious blood you have redeemed us. 
save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, to Christ our Lord who loves us and has washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for watching and walking with us in this way of the cross.